What is going on guys? Today we got a modification for the Mazda Speed 3. Wow! Today we are going to be doing the Damon. Damon. Y'all, look at this, okay? If you guys know how to pronounce this brand's name, comment down below. Because I'm definitely going to tell you, I'll probably buy parts from them again. And I don't want to keep pronouncing it wrong. So if you guys know. Anyways, we're going to be doing the full block off kit for the EGR valve delete. The block off, it's the everything that you could ever want not pass your emissions. So today we're going to be taking apart the speed, putting this kit in. I'm going to show you step by step on how to do it. As for doing it, it's not a lot. I mean, you get the big block off, you get the little block off, you get a couple bolts and some other things with it. And for the size of what you get, it's quite a long job. So give yourself an entire day. It's like 10 in the morning right now for me. So we got to take the battery out. We got to take the intake out. We got to take the intercooler off. So we got quite a bit to do. So let's get straight into it. We're going to bring the car inside the garage today and work inside and uh, get this going. Um, if you guys do want to know if you need a tune for this or not, I'm telling you guys that you don't need a tune. I'm not tuned right now. Uh, all you will get is a engine check light. Obviously, it is good to be tuned and everything, but it's not like it's not going to kill you. Uh, let's go ahead. Bring the car inside, let's get started. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, remove this. Okay, so basically the first step we gotta do take off the battery box, take out the ECU. We'll move on to the intake, the top mount, and then we should be pretty much ready to start working on the actual EGR. Big boy. Oh, that wasn't that bad. Damn, I wouldn't mind having a battery relocation. Look how much room is in this damn thing. Okay, so I decided that instead of removing all this first, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the uh, top mount first, just cause it gives me a little bit more access. So now we're going to be working down here since we got everything off. We have to remove the throttle body and there are four 8mm bolts basically holding it on. It's probably a smart idea to remove this hose. Actually, you know what, I might have to. Okay, so I removed all the bolts. This will just slide right off. Very dirty in there. So next up, what we're going to do. So you see that right there? That's a... 22 or 24 I believe we got to get that off. So we're gonna try using a wrench. What is this thing? An air in Oh, so this is part of the air system that brings air in that I don't need anymore that holds on a couple things Okay, so after playing with this for a long time, I gave up for the day. It is now about a long time later It's about six hours later uh, It's very late into the day, but why not? Let's keep working on this I didn't get this loose. My dad did. Thanks, dad. You're a fantastic person. I missed the Mazda meat today because of this dude. And I wanted to go get burgers. That's loose. And then we go over here. Eight millimeter. Loosen these two guys up right here where the other side of the pipe is. Go oh, this way, boopy boy. Look at all that. Look at all that garbage that's going into your engine, dude. It's contaminated my fingers. Okay, and take this gasket piece off from this side because you'll need it to connect it back on. Let's take this new plate. We're going to be putting it where we took off the tube on that side. Take the old gasket thing, put it on like that. And then we're going to be using the old hardware to put back in and torque these to seven foot pounds. And there's that block. Now, one thing I'm a little upset about is that in the old kits, they provided this block off piece was gold and now it's regular color. Now, this does match better, but I do wish it was gold. So if you guys are watching this, bring back the gold. And then I did add a little bit of thread locker onto this one, which we're going to be putting in with an Allen key over in here. And that is in. Pipe has been completed. Now we're going to work on removing the EGR, which is sitting back here. Okay, so first off, you want to start by removing this clip right here, which plugs into the top. Next, there is a line right here. You're going to want to remove both sides. Needle knows to do so. Okay, now there is a bolt on the other side, a bolt right here. We're going to go ahead and take off since we pulled off this line. Now, one thing I must admit that is quite funny is that it's only held in by two bolts on the lower part of the GR that holds it up to a triangle plate. There it is. That's your EGR. Weight reduction, boys. Okay, now go ahead and make sure you have Teflon tape on the end of this. Screw it in here, and it won't go all the way in. 
So just a little bit's okay. Go ahead and wipe down the gasket and then install the plate to the engine with the supplied hardware. Now one thing they don't tell you in instructions, when you pull this hose off from the turbo to the coolant line, it sits like this. You're gonna wanna flip it like this because this side's shorter and then this side's longer. And when you have it the, like the proper way, it kinks up and doesn't fit properly. So that's on, it's all on there, clamp it back on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this spring clamp. It's on there nice and that whole system is on there very nice. So now, since everything's all put on, it's on there, that plate's on there. This is all like super good. I'm gonna start putting up, um, you know, everything back together and then uh, we'll go ahead and start it and hopefully she runs. So I'm just bolting the engine bay back together here. Just putting the top mount back on. Um, other than that, everything else is tight. Intake's all on there, everything's tight. I believe all the clamps are down. I'm gonna roll this out of the garage. I'm gonna start it and I'm gonna take it out for a little bit of a drive. Ooh, a leaky blade on the ground. So, so far so good. No engine light on yet. Probably not until I start driving. Startup was fine, idling's fine. It smells like shit, so maybe that might have something to do with, you know, what we just did. So engine's light, light still not on. I'm a little surprised. I'm gonna go out for a quick run. I'm going to go do a couple pulls to make sure everything's good and we'll see when we come back. All right guys, and that is the video for today. So I went out after um, I showed you everything and I started it up. I did about 25 kilometers of driving. I did a ton of pulls and everything and no CEL. Um, today is the next day. It's currently snowing outside, which uh, yeah, we haven't had snow this year in Canada or in the province that I live in. So it's kind of nice, a little bit of snow. So you know what, um, while I'm out here, I'm gonna start the car and I'm gonna see if a CEL turns on. So if I turn the key, the CEL is supposed to show up right there. Now, if I go ahead and start this, this is gonna be weird because it's actually really cold out. I don't think I've started my car in this cold of weather. Negative one. Okay, there you go. So next day after driving, it finally realizes that the um, that the EGR is gone. So feels nice to finally have an engine check light and feel like a speed owner. But other than that, guys, that's the video for today, and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any questions, comments about installing your EGR delete, let me know down below. Super easy. The only issue I had was that 22 millimeter um, nut thing that holds in that that pipe. But once I was off, everything else was just full easy, and like taking the intake out and everything so easy, and just like honestly. Do it, why not? Anyways guys, keep it real. I'll see you guys in the next one.